Right, okay, find research. Fantastic algorithm. Um, divide and conquer algorithm that is designed to remove the amount of comparisons that we do. That, that's what we're always trying to do when we're looking for algorithms. You know, I don't want to look at all the data, I want, I want to do it in a clever way. And the way that Bind Research can attempt to do that is by making sure that the data is in sorted order. Doesn't matter whether it's ascending or descending, it doesn't make any difference. But it has to be in order so that we can infer something about the data. Okay? So what what we infer when we're doing binary research is if, if we examine a particular number, we know that every number to the left of that is going to be smaller and every number to the right is bigger. That's the clever thing that we're going to use to minimize. Okay? So instead of looking at all the data, what we're going to keep trying to do is look halfway along the data. You can only do this if your data is in a format, a data structure, that allows you to go to individual locations. So this is perfect for arrays, because with an array you can go to any particular index. You couldn't do this if you stored it as a load of variables, or you had a linked list, a true linked list, as you'll see when we look at linked lists. Okay, linked lists are serial, so sequential uh, structures, not meant to be randomly processed like this. Okay, so we, we have to keep trying to attempt to find a middle value. Right, because this is an array question, in essence, we're going to write down some information about it. So we're going to write down some index numbers. So, and this is what you should always do in your questions. Sometimes they give you this stuff, sometimes they don't. The length of this array is eight. There's eight things in there. Okay, right, so we want to keep calculating middle values. So the general process is find the middle item. Is it the one I'm looking for? If it is, stop, great. If it isn't, let's discard half the items. Okay, so that either will discard the left-hand side of the list or the right-hand side of the list. So we, we narrow the search down, and then we say, right, whatever list we've got left, let's find the middle item. We just keep doing that until we either find the item, or we have got no list to search. Okay? And there's a few different ways of, in when we, when we look at the code after Christmas, there's a few different ways of determining whether your list is ended. Okay? Um, but we won't worry about that at this stage. Right, so the demonstration is, how do we calculate the middle? Stating what is at that middle, is it what we want, and which half of the list. So that's what we've got to repeatedly demonstrate. Okay, luckily, because binary search is quite an efficient algorithm, we don't have to do these steps too often. So the first thing we've got to do is say, right, calc middle, And I'm just going to call it M. Okay, it's accepted. To calculate that middle value, we need to know what extents we're going to search from the list. So when we initially search, it's going to be the entire thing. So let's put some markers, a left marker and a right marker. And we can use those pointer values, those indexes, to calculate this. So what is the formula for calculating the middle? Divide what by two? The length by two. No, that won't work. R minus L. Huh? R minus L. R minus L? <coughs> so we should try R, R, L from R, yeah? Right, so in this instance, that gives us 7, and then divided by 2. So you're saying that. <coughs> yeah. So let's just see. So we get 7 over 2. So that gives us 3.5. Our first dilemma. Can't use mod. That's not going to help. What does mod give you? Mod gives you a range. That won't help. 
Right, div, inch of division. But you could do something else. What's the other operation you could do? No. Nope. How do you know when you're going to add one? You can, no, 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 no. We want this to be as slick as possible. We don't want loads of extra logic. Okay. Right. If we get that, <coughs> we can either round up, can't we, and say like, oh, if it's 0.4, then it stays as three. If it's 0.5 and above, just like you do in maths, round up. Or, truncate. Okay. It doesn't matter which you do, so it, it's your preference, but you have to be consistent. You can't one time round up and the other time truncate. But I'm going to tell you what you should do is truncate. How do we divide by two on a computer? You know how we divide by two. You do a shift, yeah. A shift by one bit. One of the quickest operations a CPU can do is shifting. Rounding is an expensive operation because you've got to examine this. There are clever tricks you can do, but really you've got to say, is the fraction bit less than five? If it is, throw away the fraction. If it isn't, add one to this and throw away the fraction. So there's a lot of old guff going on. Rounding up is slow. So we're going to truncate. Effectively, inch to division. But we can think of it as like, oh, it's a, a shift to the right by one bit position. That divides by two. So if I had seven, and let's just prove that. So if I had the binary value seven, and I shift the whole thing right, so if I do one bit shift right, I would get, so that's going to fall off, so I'll put my little marker, and I would get that, and obviously I'd put a zero on there. So I get three. Okay? So that's what we'll do. But, hey, if you want to do it a different way, that's fine. But I'm, I'm telling you that it's more efficient to do truncation. It's a quicker operation. You go over now, cover that? So that, that's what we'll do. Right, so in this example, when we truncate that, we actually get three. Okay? Right. So, we would then say, right, compare, we need a number to find. So, let, let's look for something that isn't there. So, let's say we're looking for, I don't know, 41. Is 41 there? 41's not there. 41. So, we're searching for 41. Okay. So, we need to say, we found the middle item. So, it's index 3. And we say, right, okay, is... The item, and you've got to be really careful. One of the things that people mess up here, they'll start saying, is it three? And they'll write, is it three? And they mean, they don't mean, is it three? They mean, is it the value at three? All right, so we say, search for one. So value at, and you are allowed to use the at symbol for what it was intended. Just be short for at. Although it's probably quicker to write at. Uh, value at three is 25. <coughs> So, no match. So, not found. No match. So, it's really important that what you're saying is, um, this is the value I'm looking for. How you write this is up to you. It's just got to be clear. Okay? It does not match with the value that we found at, at the middle item. Okay? Right. <clears throat> because we know something intelligent about this data that is in order... We know that there is no point in looking at any of these numbers because they're all smaller. Because 25 is smaller. Okay? So we're going to discard the right-hand list. So we need to say that 25 is smaller, is less than 41. So we need to discard left-hand side. That's a poor E. That's a poor E. So we discard that left hand side. So if we were looking there, that's where our middle was. The left hand side is all of this. So in order to discard it, what we need to do is move that pointer. So we set the, we don't want to include that number, we've looked at it. Don't look at a number twice, which is another simple mistake that people make. So the left pointer goes there. So we set the left pointer 
is equal to the middle plus 1. Okay, so we set that to 4. So we've got the right pointer and the left pointer now set. And then we try and calculate the middle again. So let's calc the middle. So don't, don't just write M, right? We're calculating M. So we've said, I didn't, but somebody said it is right minus left, did four. So let's try that again. So that will be seven. That is a rubbish seven, it looks like a T. Hang on. Seven minus four, because left is now four, divided by two. What does that give us? Huh? 1.5. So that's 1.5, which we're going to truncate to 1. Is that the correct calculation for the middle? It's not. It's a, it's, it is one that works. For one specific instance, when you've got the left pointer there and the right is somewhere else. So we've got left to zero, because we didn't subtract anything. That's why it worked. That is not the right calculation. I knew it wasn't the right calculation, I just wanted to, to prove it to you. Right. The calculation is, it's, it's subtle, it's like one of those little matchstick games. You know where you get them, change the equation or make the equation work by moving one match? Those sort of games. Right. It's add. You add the right and left pointers together. Which makes no difference to that first one, because left was zero. But it does make a difference here. So, if we add those two together, seven plus four, what do we get? We get 11, yeah? Hopefully you get 11. Right. So we want to divide by 2, but we're doing truncation. So 11 divided by 2 is becomes 5. Okay. Now, obviously, there isn't a middle because it's an even number. But that's where it ends up. So M becomes 5. And we just do the same thing again. So we now say we're searching for 41. Value... At, and the reason I, I, I'm, I'm taking my time and I'm, I'm writing all the steps down because that's what I'm going to get the marks for, not a load of random letters on the page again. Okay? This is one of the hardest things. It's not necessarily understanding the algorithm and being able to do it. It's being able to show it to somebody. The explanation bit's the hard bit. Right. So, at five, and this is why I wrote down all the indexes at the start if I wasn't given them, at 5 is 31. Not a match. So it's no match again. It's less than, isn't it? So 31 is less than 41. So discard the left again. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the left pointer to the right of the middle again, which is what we did last time. So we're going to discard the left. So the left pointer becomes M plus 1. So that's 6. So on my little diagram, that is now where my left and right pointers are. And I'm going to try and find the middle again. Okay. So... Background. So it's just an iterative process. I've only had to go through this twice. I've looked at two values. I've already discarded quite a few. Okay. It, it's not very efficient with small lists, binary search. Because we're doing a quite a little bit of cal They're simple calculations, but we're doing calculations. If you were to compare this with linear search, the old NAF thing, linear search in the cache would blitz binary search on something like this if you wrote it well you can do some very funny things with linear search as well you can actually run parallel searches in big lists so if you had a hundred CPUs to search you could 
you could actually say you do that, but you be that, and everyone report back. So you can actually speed things up with linear search using fancy techniques. Right, so we're going to calculate the middle again using our adding formula. So we've got left plus right. So 6 plus 7, div 2. What's that going to give us? 13 divided by 2. 6. Okay, so the middle is 6. So at 6, looking up was 42. So we're searching for always say what you're comparing with. It's really important that. So searching 41, value at 6 is 42, no match. 42 is bigger than 41, discard right. Right, and when we discard the right, what we do is we move the right pointer to the other side of the middle. Okay? So the little calculation we do, to do that, we say right equals middle minus 1. Right, so middle is 6, right is 5. Right, now, something interesting happened. So I've got my... Um, oh, I didn't put my middle on there, did I? My right pointer is now here on 5. Is it still a right pointer? No. They've switched positions. The left pointer is not to the left of the right pointer. That means we've exhausted the list. It's one of the stop conditions you can use. So you can say, like, as soon as left is gone bigger than right, or right's gone less than left, we can stop. So actually, we've exhausted the list. So there's no list to look at. And we would stop. 41 not found. So you've always got, with searchers, two stops. You find the item you're looking for, or you don't find the item you're looking for. Okay? When we're doing linear search, what tells us we didn't find the item. Remember linear search, you just go, start at the start, is it the one I want? No, move on, move on. Yeah, if we run off the end of the list, or the array, or whatever it is we're using. If we get to the end, and we didn't find it, then it doesn't exist. Unless we programmed it really bad. <laughs> That's what you've got to try and demonstrate when you get asked to show how it works. The core for me, say that you don't just write M and then some random numbers on the page. Okay? Say that you're calculating it. If you've mentioned at the start that the calculation was left plus right, integer division with two. Remember when we're writing that in um, like code, we'd write something like six plus seven, and then we'd say div. So div is the accepted uh, operator for integer division. In languages, some languages don't have it. Um, in C sharp, you have to cast something to an integer, and that does integer division for you. Uh, in other languages, they have a forward slash or a double slash and things like that, depending on whoever made those languages. Right, okay, I'll stop that recording.